All right, I'll just I'll just start. All right, last time, guys. <laughs> oh my God, last episode. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 37, and we're recording on Tuesday, April 30th, 2019. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as our weekly reminder, please like, subscribe, download us, leave us feedback and questions at sojutalkpodcast at gmail.com, YouTube, Reddit, wherever you are finding us. All right. <laughs> there's, 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 there's an elephant in the room. We mentioned it at the end of last week's episode, but this will be the last episode of season one of Soju wow. Talk. No. We're not Yay. leaving forever. So don't right. don't don't get worried. <laughs> don't abandon us, please. <laughs> <laughs> please come back later. But so real talk, Warren and Anita are graduating from college in about a week or so. And then right after they're both going to on vacation for about a month. I know they're both going to Korea at one point. I think Warren's going to hit it up in Japan. It's going to yeah. be lit. And Taiwan. And Taiwan. He's going all over the place. Anita's all never the Anita has never been on a plane before and she chose I to go care. to Korea. Uh, I- <laughs> But because of that, like, we potentially, maybe we could record, like, internationally, but the timing would be weird. And I think they should just fully enjoy their break from college. Like, since they graduated, they should just fully relax themselves. So we should be back around mid-June is what we're projecting. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with season two. We have some big ideas that we might try to do. But we'd like to thank everyone at home for listening to us up until this point. It's been yes. a great 37 episode run where we only skipped wow. one week. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. And we even recorded that week. It was just technical difficulties. But yeah. wow. I'm, I'm super happy that all of you have listened to us and all, all the love you've given thank us. You. I want to give a shout numbers, out to honestly. Carmen because she gave uh, an email for this week saying how she can't wait for season two. I can't wait for season Aww. two. Thank you, Carmen. But I'd like to thank everyone at home. The Soju Talk Nation, the Drinking Buddies, oh. whatever you guys are. We'll oh. think of a fan club <laughs> oh name God. for next year. But yeah, so we will be... Com- we'll, this is the last episode for season one, and we'll be coming back with season two in mid-June. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get back to the podcast. At the end of the show, we will be talking about Produce X 101. Yes. So stick around for that, yes. because I'm pretty hyped for that. <laughs> we'll, but when we yes. come back, we'll definitely have strong opinions as to what oh, yeah. happened we'll be oh, like yeah. six episodes mm-hmm. in at that point so we're gonna like we're gonna go hand that's gonna be a super long like extra episode i think for us but that that will be at the end of the podcast so let's get into our big new releases for this week there were a lot of them like mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were all guy groups i don't know how you feel about that i was a little bit depressed but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. It, no, honestly, though, it it's kind of you. it exceeded my expectations. So back on April twenty fourth, Wednesday, we had very, very with from now and flying with spring memories. On the twenty fifth Thursday, we had TXT second song, Cat and Dog, and then April 29th, Monday, we had the boys with Bloom Bloom and New West with Bet Bet. So let's start mm-hmm. at the top. Well, actually, let's not start at the top. Oh, I want to group together oh. three of these oh. groups. I'm gonna group together oh. very, very txt and the boys because they're all i wouldn't call the boys actually a rookie group at this point but they are sort of a rookie group they're kind of new still but let's group all of them together all right anita you really liked very very's debut song ring 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 yes how do you feel about from now oh okay first my first impression was that i really really enjoy the fact that they've kept with that retro sound i think this time it's more like more 80s like late 80s so um it's still it's i don't know it's still my preference so i even though i feel like ring 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 is a little bit better and i enjoy it a little bit more i one as well the dance is really great um i went to the music video i think it's still it's still very much that style which is very Mm -hmm. fresh it's it's not it's not like trying to be very tough. Like their concept is not that. It's still very much like they're young, um, fresh. Like I don't know. I think it's it's good for them to it's keep that, going this that way. That new for a wave bit. bubble. Yeah, that, yeah. That they be coming out with these days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 get, let's think of a term. Let's call this like cotton candy or something, right? Oh <laughs> it's not bubble gum. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not... The thing is, some people say that it's kind of a cute concept, but I don't really think it's... Uh-huh. They're going for cute. I think it's more just youthful, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Youth. youthful. Yeah, youth. yeah. Okay, so here's my take on this. They are from Jellyfish Entertainment. Shout out yes. to, well, no, not shout out to Jellyfish because yeah, what are they doing with Google <laughs> Don? Yo, my my well, Sejongi, man, like it's it's a struggle right now. Decisions. It's a struggle. All right, but let, let's focus on very very. For me, this song from now, mm-hmm. pretty good song. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest boy group fan, but I did like this song. But for me, I do prefer ring 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 mm-hmm. now i get what you're saying that the that they're, they're definitely the same line of song right i'm yeah. happy that they stuck yeah. to the theme like they got a theme it's definitely mm-hmm. like that retro feel but for me i just felt that ring 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 specifically the chorus was a little bit more catchy than, than yeah from i now. can see that mm-hmm. and i'm like if i'm not super invested in a group for me it's like it really comes down to the chorus i would say Mm, because yeah. a lot of time in k-pop the verses is sort of like showcasing each member but the chorus is where it all comes together right mm-hmm. and for me who's not super invested in any individual members i think i judge heavily on what the chorus sounds like yeah for mm-hmm. good or for worse but that's honestly the truth <laughs> but i did i do like their theme and i'm happy that they're committed to it but warren what you got any takes on this this was the New Jack Swing song. And yes, like, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. We don't, yeah. We don't get a lot of New Jack Swing in K-pop nowadays. And I was like, this is pretty yes. cool. Not, admittedly, I'm not the good. world's biggest New Jack Swing fan, but like, there was like, a scene in the music video. Low- Sorry, I'm switching up. No, no, like, oh, yeah. low-key, like, there is such a fight going on between rookie groups right now. It is, like, intense this it's- year. Yeah. It's a tough spot yeah. to be in right now. Yeah. Guy rookie group is very tough because girl rookie group, it's yeah. like we all know Itzy's kind of dom- dominant over everyone. Right. right. But guy mm-hmm. rookie groups, there's a ton of them and they're all pretty good. So I feel like there's not like one that's like huge. Yeah, I think TXC obviously is most popular because of the yeah, company they're so from. I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I don't think they've completely broken out yet. Mm-hmm. I would say mm-hmm. that Stray Kids, although I don't really consider Stray Kids a rookie group because I know they were a rookie group last year, but they're starting to have their breakthrough with Mirror. So I don't put them yeah. in this group. I'm talking about like the recent groups. No one's really completely pulled ahead yet. So the field is still wide open, I would say. Mm-hmm. All right. But Warren, you, I, aesthetically, I do like these these like pastel color music videos. I don't know. There's something about them. Minimalistic sets That's too. Well. Kind of like it. There was a lot of blue. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. was very blue. Yes. Like, denim was blue, and someone's hair color was blue, and I was like, yes, yes there was a blue yeah. hair kid. Yep, yep. There was a scene where like they were like walking next to a car. The, yeah. The was like inside the car oh, from the past. I, I that was my favorite. Reference, that was my though, favorite right? shot. Wait, there's a reference. There's a reference. Yeah, they're doing like the the challenge, the Kiki challenge. Have you seen videos? Oh, I I get you, Anita. Yeah, that that I think that was that's a thing. What I thought of, that was so a I thing. I think that that's what they're referencing. So essentially, What's Warren, that challenge? that challenge was you played that song, and then while you were like slow rolling your car, the passenger yeah. would get out and dance <laughs> down the street, and then they would Where jump back in the car. Thing? This was definitely a thing that you completely missed. <laughs> oh my god! There's tons of videos on this. Wait a minute! Yeah. I'm I'm like I. Oh. I, I must have lived under a rock class. I hey, just I, just just stay oh. just claim you were like studying hard or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was. Uh... All right. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about TXT Cat and Dog now. So this is from the Kid uh, Entertainment. This is uh-huh. their second song, and they got a second song pretty quick after Crown. Mm-hmm. This is different than Crown, though. Like well. Okay, so the thing is, this song is not technically new because their mini album, their EP. Oh, okay, I EP. see you there. Okay. Anyway, so I I heard this song when the EP came out. So a couple about a month ago, I would say, a month and a half. Um, oh my and god! And my first reaction to the audio was that um, the the theme about the the dog and being a pet i don't i don't know how i feel about it <laughs> you but, mean like conceptually but, right you don't get the, the what yeah, they're going for right yeah i mean i think instrumentally i like the beat 
mm-hmm. and I think it's catchy. It's just the the theme that is going on. I don't know. You know okay, yeah. how how to feel about it. I was wondering I don't know why they keep pushing this thing. Sorry, what? Wait, what do you say, Warren? No, I don't get why they keep pushing this animal thing because that's their last yeah. their debut single was like that too, right? Like I got a tail. Well, yes. Okay. A tail where like with a horn something like and then the like, like cat and yeah dog, yeah like. yeah hmm i don't know what they're going for personally like <laughs> i normally don't read too into k-pop songs but i get why i get your <laughs> concerns i will say this is definitely more rap focused than crown yes yeah and it's a yep. i would say it's heavily auto-tuned rap right now historically uh-huh. I'm not the biggest fan of autotune, but I see that it is a popular trend these days. And mm-hmm. it's like, what are you going to do, right? Like, <laughs> I can't just bash a song <laughs> because of the, the, the methods they're using. That being said, I did like this song. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I liked it a lot more. Than their debut? Yeah. Easily. Really? Oh, okay. Easily. okay. I, 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 I kinda, uh, so, so the first thing, Anita, I was wondering why this song sounded familiar. Now it makes sense ah. to me. Uh-huh. Number two, I think it's a trend for me this week where I prefer the previous, the like the last release for each yeah. group a little bit uh-huh. more than this one. Like I liked Crown a little more, but I am happy that they're switching it up because they're gonna need to. Because of the weight of expectation on TXT is so high because they're from Big Hit that they will need right. to change concepts frequently. I think like BTS does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one last thing I would say about this song. Um, as a positive is that the choreo for this song is good is so it's they're, they're doing so many different things mm-hmm. i yeah, don't know in a bad way it, well, okay no, no, so, in, a, in a good way for me at least i think i think it's very creative i'll say this because they do like a slide and then there's people jumping over people on the floor it's it's something that i would not have thought of go along with the song if i had just heard the audio so i think they're really good dancers i don't know who choreographed this but they're very creative um and i don't know i feel like i'm the same with doug where i kind of prefer their last two other songs that they promoted a little bit more but i think they're still doing good with this like from mm-hmm. the live performances that i've seen i think the response is really good you know you remember that debut showcase tour that they're having that I yeah, kind of yeah. said, like, save your money. Well, no one saved their money. That thing sold out oh, in, no. like, 15 minutes, <laughs> I <Yeah>. think. <laughs> like, so I was wrong there. I admit that I was wrong. And I underestimated the TXT fandom, and I am sorry for, about that. <laughs> <laughs> apologize. I, I, I completely apologize to TXT, Big Hit Entertainment, BTS, all of them. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to our last rookie-ish boy group, The Boys with Bloom Bloom from Cracker Entertainment. For me, uh-huh. again, pretty good song, but I do prefer No Air. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. It's just something, like, I think that my issue with a lot of these songs comes down to choruses, again, as I've said before, where mm-hmm. I just feel that they hit it out of the park with the choruses of Ring, 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 Crown, and No Air, and This Week... I found them a little lacking, but at the same time, it's not that it like I would say the boys went down at all. It's just mm-hmm. I don't think it's a humongous step up. I agree. Yeah, I feel like for me this song was it still has that sound that they have, um, but I didn't find it that memorable. So like I remember the music video, but the song itself, I don't think it was. In the same level as no yeah i don't think it helps that they're that very very anti xt and the boys all came back in the same week because yeah. i'm i'm jumbling up them jumbling up all the yeah, songs in my head yeah. a little bit and also mm-hmm. and flying had sort of a softer sound than they normally have too so right. I, I was like i had to listen to all these songs a bunch of times before i could distinctly remember what each one of them sounded like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that's not a bad. That's not the group's fault, right? Because they do have right, individual yeah. songs. It's just like when all these groups come back with a, a like. I wouldn't say they're the same like exact same line, but it's like the same family of sounds. It's it's mm-hmm. a little confusing to me right now. Mm, yeah. 
I mean, I feel like the music video is at least kind of distinguishable, you know? Like, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, yes. Definitely. There's not a clear theme, right? Like, they were like, oh, baseball, you know? Like, baseball, I like baseball. the story, yeah. And, like, at the end, then there's, like, this, like, the, the screen ratio kind of changes, and, like, they're kind of like a cartoon, and, like, you know, yeah. baseball is like a rocket, and, like, you know, like, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but, uh, all right, so I think we've talked about the rookie-ish boy groups pretty in depth mm-hmm. let's talk about end flying spring memories this is a oh i got a lot to say about this good oh bad <laughs> no it, a little bit of both right so mm-hmm. okay. i'm really high on end flying right now for some reason they are always come up good. in my recommended section on youtube like yes especially their stuff in japan for some reason they do all these in, oh, their yeah. live stuff in japan is yep. really really good mm-hmm. i highly recommend everyone try it like listen to it now when I think of N flying, I think of an up tempo, I would say modern day FT Island for me. Is yeah. their sound? What makes sense? Mm-hmm. Makes sense because they're rocky. both from FNC. Mm-hmm. Very rocky, little bit fast paced. For me, my favorite songs are Hot Potato and yes. most recently <laughs> Rooftop. Adina and I talk about that Hot Potato song quite yes. often. I, I love, love that song. song. Oh, but I think it's okay. I know they switched it up because it's the spring, and I know that because this song came so soon after Rooftop that it wasn't meant to be like a premiere and flying song to raise them up higher. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they their intentions with this song was more like a let's do a song for the spring, not let's hit it out of the park again. Right. Mm-hmm. Because even in the music video, it the music video felt like it was... Like, this was a song from an OST, not, like, a and flying main song. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I see that. Now, it was a lot more springy, a more, a little bit more ballady, a little less rock than I'm yeah. used to with and flying But it's not like I dislike the song. It was just a very different sound than what they normally do. Yeah, I feel like I was... I, lo- I wasn't expecting it to be a slower song, but I almost feel like... I appreciated that they showed they could do that because I know, like you said, a lot of their singles tend to be more like up tempo. Mm-hmm. But I think this was still really good. So I think as just like a I don't know as something that they put out there, like not meaning to just gain a lot of traction, but just like something to listen to. I think is good. I, yeah, yeah. I think the most defining thing about M Flying will be the next song that's fast paced for them. Mm-hmm. i know rooftop is not super fast paced it's more like it, it's literally like a song that's played on a rooftop right but but at the yeah. same time their next rock m- more rock oriented song will be very yeah. critical for their success going forward mm-hmm. all right lastly we got newest bet bet so they're from pledis this is minion's return from 101 i really like newest's sound in general yes Mm-hmm. Now I I think that's because my bias in newest I have a bias in newest actually yeah uh, who who is it Beko oh now my 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 I love the sound of new, newest but they are so defined by Beko's vocal quality that they live and die by him yeah I see mm-hmm. especially because their chorus like you know some song like some groups their chorus are more instrumental with like a dance thing. But almost all Nua song is heavily reliant on Beko hitting high notes. He just sings the whole cor- chorus really high. Yeah, like, and powerful. If you listen to this one, yeah. That being said, they're super consistent with their sound. It's, yeah, I agree. And I applaud them for because maybe it's because they're older and their songs, their sounds a little more mature. But mm-hmm. they are so distinct from everything else we've listened to this week. Yeah, I I think for me, this song was probably the one that I felt like I had more of a reaction in my first watch of the video, just because, I don't know, I feel like the cinematography, the dance, the song, the theme, is just really interesting. I, I feel like they've done this sort of thing before, where it's like, uh, what is it called? Like mystical, like fantasy, mm-hmm. yep, like yep. dark fantasy theme. Dark fantasy and I is really their sound. It. That's the perfect word for yes, them. Yes, yes. Dark fantasy. Yo, and you, I really enjoyed it. I think. You want a TMI? A too much information? You want one about Beko? Oh. <laughs> he okay. is the writer. No, oh, he's the lyricist for the song "Dugun Dugun" by From Is Nine. 
<laughs> that is him. Huh. Oh, I don't remember that song. Like, I need to get it right. That's a, such a yeah. weird song for him to have written. But that that's my TMI for this week. But I, from what I can tell from the reactions to the song, everyone's very happy. Minion's back. I think their yes. their views mm-hmm. are definitely gone up because of it. Yay. Because he has a strong fandom. Mm. Let's see. Help me is at about six million after five months, and this song's already at two point five after one day. Ooh. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. really good for them. Yeah. yeah. And. Considering I'm going to air out some complaints about Pledis later in this episode, oh. <laughs> I think that I'm happy that Pledis gave them a comeback this soon because... Where is Pristin? That's, that's, that's my concerns so, <laughs> that I'll talk about later, but I, I want to say my, my issue with Newest, it's, I don't know if it's an issue because I like Beko, but they really live and die by him. Hmm... Yeah, I mean, would you prefer that like other vocalists had more of a chorus? Like, I don't know. They, they, it's like a double edged sword because rap. if they if they limited him on the chorus, it would it wouldn't be newest though, right? So it's like, yeah. oh, what, what are you gonna do? I just I just would like for me to leave their songs remembering some of the parts that the other members had more, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense. Yeah. I don't know though because he has such a powerful distinct vocal in the chorus that it's hard to remember anyone else. Mhm. But overall for me, a good song. Definitely Min Young coming back is going to make them go crazy going forward their popularity and I think they're mm-hmm. going to have a big year. That's a prediction from me. Yes. All right. I think we've covered all the songs this week, but let's move on to our show winners. Well, there was only a show winner. There was one winner. <laughs> yes. So today on Tuesday, the show didn't broadcast, but all five other shows were won by BTS's Boy With Love featuring Halsey. Oh, oh my yes. God. Bringing yes. their total to seven. Wow. Now, so here's one interesting thing. So we said last, well, when we reviewed this song that we couldn't really, where, where was like Halsey in general, right? Right. Yeah. So, so I... I listened to the song a couple more times. I even looked it up on Spotify. I listened to it, did, but without like the music video. But she is way more prominent on the audio version than in the music video. I feel like I hear huh. her at times in the chorus. I don't know if it's because she's not on I, the screen. Like I, I can't really catch her voice. Wait, so yeah. are you saying the audio is different? Like I don't know if it's different, but if you go on Spotify and you just listen to the song, it feels like she's mm-hmm. more of a part of the song than it, she was in the music video. Hmm. which was a weird thing for me so i don't know if the they're different versions but she's only in the music video for like that one chorus part but i feel like when you just listen to the audio version without the music video you're like oh she was actually a pretty big part of the song so that's for the viewers at home to to weigh in on because that's just the impression i got yes i will have to go Hmm. and check it out but seven wins for boy with love but them not being in Korea that frequently is like hella impressive. I'm gonna say they're they're just going bananas. Yeah. But let's move on to what we're cur- currently listening to. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 okay. I I don't, I don't want to read. Dying. So for some reason, when I click any <clears throat> music video on YouTube, a girl group music video, mm-hmm. I get. My so you know how on YouTube has that feature where they autoplay the stuff that's recommended for you afterwards. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The second song that always comes up is Pristin's V Get It for me. Oh. So I've listened to this because <laughs> I've I've been playing some games and I have a music videos running on my second screen. Right. I've listened to Pristin's V Pristin V Get It maybe ten times this week. <laughs> wow. And it just made me get so angry that Pledis isn't giving them promotions. <laughs> like I get so angry every yeah. time this song plays because they're so good, and it is an absolute shame that they haven't had a comeback in a really long time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's people have been saying that Pristin doesn't do anything because Pledis is like, oh, if the IOI reunion happens, might as well keep them empty. There is news about that later in the what? podcast, too. There's news. That's what I was referring to. Yeah. What? We'll talk about that later. Go on for now. Okay. The other thing that comes up 
Well, though, this is me searching. I always find myself just looking up Uju Sonyo music video playlist and listening to, like, everything. <laughs> I like... Other than that weird Mickey collaboration, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the 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 Starship Christmas oh, song yeah. that they had this past year, because that's oh, that yeah, song, no. that song that is for count. some reason like the third song in the playlist. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because it's in chronological order. But other than those two songs, I really like every single Uju Sonyo song so much, wow. including the uh, cheerleader concept. I don't care. I'll listen to it. Oh damn! Okay. Dang. What a fan. Like, hardcore. They are super yeah. high on my tier list for what I personally like right now. Like, after Eyes One and Twice, they might be somewhere in there. That mix. Hmm. Hmm. I'm still waiting for China Line to get back so we could reform Exodia and do this thing right. <laughs> but we'll have to see. The other stuff I've listened to, A Pink's Ung Ung. I listened to that maybe ten times this week. I don't know wow. why. Really like Dang. that song now. Like, Jung Eun Ji is, like, the mm. best. And then lastly, Twice as Fancy, listen to that about 30 of times. Of course. Oh, of course. But that's all I've been listening to. Let's see mm-hmm. what Warren has been. I uh, Y'all been listening to Twice Fancy, but, like, I was like, gotta mix it up a little bit. So I, I admittedly jumped back onto the tr- Twice hype train, and I've been going through all of their songs. Bro. Like, Wow. They might have the most solid discography for all girl groups ever. Like, that might be a bold statement. No, I think you're right. Like, I don't find myself ever skipping. I agree. Mm -hmm. I I skip skip when um, Knock Knock comes on. Okay, I was going to say that's the only song I might (laughs) skip. (laughs) They get one, they get one, like, free pass though you know what i mean like eh, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. Else. i mean i, I don't know I why we both hate that song. song so much remember when the song came out we like we like play we like played it on the car like five times and you're like let's move on now yeah yeah that, that was the one there's the one song i don't like but what else have you been listening, listening to? to so yeah i've been listening to a lot of twice i've been listening to twice the gram a lot their, their first full-length album mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i've mentioned these guys a lot in the past but I might as well as mention it again because that's all I listen to, honestly. Besides Twice, and they're uh, they're a rapper slash producer duo called XXX. Um, and I've been listening to their whole discography from starting from this uh, uh, mini album called Kill Me, uh, to uh, first language, second language, and Kim Shimia's uh, album with a producer called D Sanders. This all sounds like a lot of work. Just look up XXX. <laughs> rap on youtube mm. and then you'll start listening to rap that sounds very very different this, mm. is, this isn't mm. travis scott oh oh mm-hmm. snap. this isn't migos oh okay they won so many awards for good reason mm. these guys are art like art art <laughs> art, Dude, art. I'm not even kidding. They have art exhibitions with these songs. I'm not even kidding. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> literal <laughs> art. Literally art. Like, art, art. Like, it screams art in your face. So if you want some art in your life, just go listen to XXX. All right, Anita, what have you been listening to? Um, So I've been listening to Twice a lot. As Fancy. you should. As usual, as as, as people do, um, and I've also been listening to um, "Very Varies All I Do." So this song is from their their second EP. So what's being promoted um, with the single right now? And the thing about the song is that um, it reminds me a lot of us, uh, kind of like the sound that Bruno Mars had for Twenty Four Karat Magic. Oh, 24 Karat, I think is the name of the album. Um, so it's very 80s, but this one in particular is just super 80s. I think I think the progression of the song reminds me of Versace on the Floor. So if you guys know that song, Versace, it's Versace, that Versace. kind of song. No, no, oh, not that. Oh, oh. But, <laughs> Long Versace. Um, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's a slower, slower song, but it's not a ballad. It's still very poppy like 80s pop so i would recommend 
And lastly, I've been listening to. Well, this is not new for me. I I've, I've known about this artist before, and this this is not new stuff that they released, but I really liked it, and I've been listening to it again recently. So it's uh, the artist is called Ocean. So he's Ocean on YouTube, but on Spotify he goes by Ocean from the Blue, and the two singles that I've been listening to a lot are called Baby and Wish. Um, this is kind of like uh, like chill hip hop. Like he sings, so he's a vocalist, but it's very like hip hop instrumental, but like the kind of lo fi. Um, so it's it's really nice. It's it's more like relaxing, easy listening music. But I think you should check him out. Um, I don't think these two songs are on Spotify, but their EPs are on there. So what are their EPs that. called? Um, I forget the two. I feel like they weren't really promoted. So I've only listened to the stuff that he had on Sound uploaded to YouTube. But if you search up Ocean from the Blue, all lowercase, all together on Spotify, you'll find them. Okay. Does he have a song called Super Mario by any chance? Yes, yes. Oh, snap. Okay. okay. That's him. And I, was just go- I was just searching them up on YouTube, and then one of the words was Super Mario. And I was like, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, that's more recent. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, but I, I think that's all we've been listening to. Let's move on to our news and events from last week. So the first one, this section is called Are Twice the Goats. So if you don't know what oh, goat twice means, the goats. it means greatest of all time. So, TWICE surpasses SES and becomes the girl group with the highest album sales ever in Korea. Holy shit. So, according according to JYP Entertainment, on April 26th, TWICE's latest album, Fancy You, sold 314,000 copies as of April 25th. The girl group has released a total of 12 albums since since their debut with Uahage in October 2015. Over 3.75 million albums have been sold so far in oh for god. Korean language albums, right? Whoa. This, oh my god. This bests the previous record held by legendary group SCS, who sold 3.6 million albums in total. Additionally, Twice has also recorded high album sales in Japan, with eight Japanese albums selling over 6 million copies in total. Whoa. Mm-hmm. So okay. to get, they've sold about 10 million albums so far, right? Isn't like oh my god. So for some perspective, Girls Generation sold 2.8 million copies in their existence. Finkel so, sold 2.4. Baby Vox sold 1.9. So twice is like in a league of their own at this point. Oh my god! Already, this is like oh, fuck, like. like I think of Girls' Generation as like a legendary group. I don't know if it's because they've disbanded yeah. or because mm-hmm. I, they feel very a lot older to me. But it's like, on paper, if we go objectively by numbers, Twice is like the greatest of all time in terms of girl groups. Yeah. They, they still feel very new to me. I know. Like, I feel like, what's going to happen in the next five years? Yeah, like that, that's what I'm wondering because it's like, all right, they came out in 2015, right? It's four years. I'm assuming... All right, I don't want to say when I think Twice is going to disband or not, right? But <laughs> if we go on record, g- girl groups last about seven to eight years, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. So if we're about like half their lifespan and they've already broken all the records, they're just going to post ridiculous numbers in general. Yeah. But man, who would have thought that that group who started with Uahage and like Cheer Up and TT could maintain <laughs> this level of like success throughout all the years? Oh my God. Crazy. Here, here's a small fact. Sana was my least favorite member on the first song. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Yeah, something about the, the cheerleading pigtail thing, I absolutely disliked. When did you start liking mm. her? Shy, shy, shy. Oh, oh you one of those. I'm one of those. <laughs> I'll admit it. But let's move on to... Alright, the next two sections are like... One is like little depressing and the following one is ridiculous in general but let's start with the first one so this is kong daniel news oh 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 boy boy. what's going on initially sources claim that kong daniel traveled to the u.s with that um 
let's call it his sugar mama miss soul to work <laughs> on solo music after requesting <laughs> to nullify his contract so so this so nuna is that lady who apparently works as like a she makes the moves in china for k-pop groups that's where we started a couple months ago mm-hmm. but at this point people are saying that like he like she's essentially representing him is what people are claiming mm. so they said after the first the first court hearing between 101's Kang Daniel and his label LM Entertainment sources claim that he was working on the on a new solo album during the legal disputes right mm-hmm. so they said Kang Daniel and this mysterious Sol Nuna allegedly visit Los Angeles California meeting up with producers discussing his solo work and after she returned to Hong Kong after stopping in Incheon and he got off the plane in Incheon and went back to wherever he lives in Seoul hmm. but then his rec his representatives completely denied it but at this point his representatives means his lawyers right because he's in a fight with his right. company yeah LM, right. So his company said we're checking with him personally about whether the reports are true. He's not preparing any official promotions in the entertainment industry right now. I mean that they know of. <laughs> it's weird that they're like we're checking with him because don't they just have his number to text him and be yeah. like, "Fam, what happened?" Right? I don't know. I I think it's personally because they're in a legal dispute, so they can't say a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they are. So as it mentioned previously, they're in full swing with this legal dispute now so the lawsuit began when the former 101 member asked for the cancellation of his exclusive contract with lm entertainment this past march his representatives and his league and his legal team from yulchon llc cited that lm entertainment breached his contract as they signed joint business contract with mmo entertainment so to break it down basically kang daniel side is saying that his record label lm entertainment sold his rights to other companies when they oh. should be the ones managing it completely mm. so that's the overarching theme for this they're also saying that that lm entertainment like that deal that they brokered his rights for was for over five hundred thousand dollars us so we're talking big money mm-hmm. right what the heck and kang daniel side is saying that that's about 10 times more than kang daniel himself received so that's kind of shady huh. if true hmm but however, on the other side, LM Entertainment said that Kang Daniel was already paid his down payment that was in the contract, and they claimed that they were aware of the joint contract when they signed it. So, conflicting reports. It's a mess. Hmm. I don't know who's right or wrong on this. Hmm. I won't make a claim here, but I will say... The negative coming out of this is that it's kind of tarnishing his reputation and the fact that he can't make music right now yeah. are the two worst things. He, about yeah, this. he should be promoting. Mm, yeah, people are gonna forget about him. Honestly, like this is not a good like, thing. Like it's one of those things when you watch a lot of Korean variety, certain people are very hot for a limited amount of time and then they kind of disappear. Yeah. For instance, last year it was all about winner Song Mino. He was on everything, mm. and then this year it's all about Pio. He's like the hot guy right now. Mm. So your your stardom in Korea is very volatile, and you have to strike when the iron's hot. And for Kang Daniel to be going through legal disputes right now is horrible for his career pro- progression. I would say, super unfortunate. But let's move on to the crappy thing, the scandals this week. No. There was a bunch of stuff that came out. Um, oh no! The major one. This was even on my local New Jersey radio. They talked about this. Oh, in no. English, was after oh. testing positive for drugs, JYJ's Yoon Chun announces his departure from the entertainment industry. Now, <sighs> the weird thing about this is that pretty much the evidence was stacked against him that he did in fact do amphetamines, which is a type of drug. Um, okay. His sample came up positive from the like the Korean government's test facilities for these drugs, mm-hmm. but he denied it for 19 days. And he even had a press conference stating his innocence and that he never touched drugs and he was unsure how this, they got in his system. I think the press conference was before the, the positive results. But yesterday, he finally confessed to using drugs after those 19 days of denials. Oh, but man. the caveat is this: his drug scandal is kind of tied to his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, who mm-hmm. is a heiress to a very rich family that has a lot of power, it seems. 
Yep. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you want to look that up more, that's for you because she's not a uh, K-pop celebrity herself. Right. But mm-hmm. basically, when he was admitting to using these drugs, he completely blamed it on her, saying, "I only started using drugs oh. when I got back together with her because they had been broken up for a while." The thing is, how do you blame your girlfriend for using drugs? Like, yeah. it, it, for me, it's not like she was the one shoving the needles into his arm, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> so that that's that's where I draw the line. And I think if he was going to ever salvage his career or anything, he needed to admit to it immediately if it was true. Right. The fact that he went all those days denying it makes him look really bad, I would say. Yeah. Quoting himself, he was like, oh, I'm denying this not because it's going to ruin my career, because I do not want to live a lie as a life. Like, really? Like, you do. Oh. Yeah, it's just yeah. kind of terrible. And my my worst thing is like, man, I was hoping for a DBSK reunion down the line, but you, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen. Mind. I feel like it's really hard to be a fan right now. Yeah. But go, go, there's a lot of reading to do on this. There's a lot of like stuff going on. And like it's, yeah. it's even tied to the burning sun. It's like it's just a wild hot mess right now. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure his ex-girlfriend has ties to the club too. So it's like yeah, it's a yeah. big mess right now. Other things, so... Alright, so there was some news about FT Island member Jong Yun. He's banned from leaving the country because of an investigation. But whenever you're under investigation for a crime, of course, you're not going to be able to leave the country. That's a, a general mm-hmm. thing. The bigger thing... Okay, this this was more Sungri news, right? Man, this okay. kid is doing some shady things. Oh boy, here Ooh. we go again. What's going on? So, police request arrest warrants for Sungri and Mr. Yu. He's the CEO of Yuri Holdings, or former CEO, I think, at this point. And his wife is a celebrity and actress. So, they are they're getting arrest warrants served to them for prostitution and embezzlement. What? So, in terms of K-pop, Ooh. why is this relevant? So, obviously, Sungri is involved. But the big thing was, apparently... Or what is being yeah. alleged is that Sungri was paying hotel fees that included prostitutes for some VIP guests using a YG credit card. Oh, what? Oh, rip. That's, rip. that's, what? that's, that was the big break. Rip. And, oh, no. and the oh. other man investi- who's being investigated, Mr. Yu, admitted to the prosecution charges. Uh-oh. He said that, yeah, it happened. Ooh. So oh now police are like swarming YG Entertainment and investigating them because it's like, yeah. how much did they know about this? That's, and I'm not going to say that why, because this overarching theme is that YG is somewhat connected to Burning Sun. That was one of the underlying yeah. themes that they were investigating. And because this Mr. Yu admitted to a lot of these things, it's tying YG to a lot of the Burning Sun stuff going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a wild hot mess. This what is, a wild hot mess. This is just really unfortunate because like, there's they're about to release like a call, right? So like YG is is it's dangerous to be associated with them right now. So oh, if I was a trainee, I'd leave. Yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. Run away. <laughs> there's yeah. some unfortunate news coming out of that that I have in like the the quick take mm-hmm. section. But mm-hmm. okay. The th- all right, so also Sungri gave this like terrible excuse. He's like, I bought the, I paid for the hotels with the YG card, but I did not know it was going towards prostitutes. That was his defense. How do you not know what your own money is going towards? I mean, I mean, the charge was apparently about twenty five thousand USD. Oh my god! You, you would know. I know, but well, I I honestly think that they're gonna like throw the book at Sungri, and he's gonna go away for a decently long time. A decently long time? No, he's done. No, no I mean like, wow. no, I don't mean like in terms of his career. His career's done. I'm saying like physically in jail. I think he's going to go for at oh. least like five oh. years plus, oh. I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Dang. I can't yeah. see him like getting out of this at this point. It, it, it's it's really unfortunate and it just shows that with money comes great responsibility and some people just choose to do these crazy things with their money. Yeah. With great money comes great responsibility. <laughs> That's like a mix of a like a Spider-Man line, but all right, let's yes. let's move on to our yes, quick is. takes. So, CJ uh, ENM responds to rumors oh. that IOI oh. plan to reunite, oh. attend oh. KCON LA oh. and release a new album. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. What's happening? So back on April, so on today, April 30th, one exclusive report caused a stir by saying that IOI may re- reunite this this year, and they claimed that they were going to they were going to come back at KCON LA as the reunion stage and follow what? up with a full album in September, as well as an end of the year concert. Wait, what does this mean for for the members? Like, what's okay, going to happen? Okay, so you know what the crazy part yeah. is. In response, CJ E&M told media outlets there is nothing confirmed regarding the lineup for KCON LA in August. We are currently checking up on the rumors related to IOI's attendance. Additionally, another mm-hmm. associate of the of IOI said, "It's true that we are currently discussing IOI reunion plans, but nothing is confirmed." Which means that they're not denying it. I did not hear a denial in there. I just heard, nope. Mm, nope. maybe. For me, I think if IOI comes back, I don't think it'll be the full group. That's what I'm... Yeah, I feel like it might be difficult for some members to... The Chaz? The Chaz? So I, the I don't two, know. I just the feel two like... that strike me that will, won't do this. There's three, actually. Three that I think mm-hmm. won't. Chunga. She's kind of right. So I know she has a lot of loyalty to the group, and the only way she would probably do this if she goes to KCON LA and does her Chunga stuff and does IOI stuff right together. Oh yeah, yeah. It would have to be both, both. because her solo career. The the reason. All right. So the reasoning, if we get down to it, why they're reuniting is because the individual careers of these kids has not been that great. Yeah. Besides Chunga, yeah. Besides Chunga, Bes- I would yeah. say, mm-hmm. and maybe. Jugyo Young in China, right? Like, that's the only other thing. <laughs> that's the C pop. We don't count that. So she's the other one who's like a maybe for me because she's doing well in China, right? That's a big maybe. Mm, yeah. The third one, Jun Sumi, because she hasn't had her um her debut yet. Now, okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next one real quick. So her debut is delayed until the end of May because of c- the company's internal issues oh. at YG. So I she's a casualty a, of it. I thought that's a rumor, and Black Label said we're not sure about that. Yeah. It might be a rumor, but she was supposed to come back tomorrow, and she clearly isn't. True. Hmm. Okay, yeah. But she's the third one that I think is a potential maybe, because you would think she would focus on that solo stuff. But I'm talking I like... the article. It says, it says her album is complete. Her, her All the songs mm-hmm. are complete. They haven't filmed a music video, and they're just, they're just waiting for a good timing, apparently. Uh, yeah, they're probably just uh... waiting for all this stuff to burn, to well, <laughs> ironically burn out a little. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Burning some to burn down, but yo. But in terms, of the, the the Priston girls definitely want to do this. The Goo Goo yeah. girls definitely want to yeah. do this. I'm sure. Let's see the Wakey Mickey. Wakey Mickey girls hundred percent want to do this. Kim Soe wants to do this. Yeon Jung wants to do this. Jung Cheon wants to do this. Like most of the kids, this is set up to do. I would say. Man, if they come back, I'm going to be the happiest person ever. If they come back, <laughs> if they come back with the prison without the Priston girls, I'll be so angry. <gasps> no, they can't do I'll that. Be, I mean, so the thing about Priston, which is weird, is that they've all started to open up their personal SNS accounts on Instagram. Wait, really? Huh. Mm-hmm. And generally, oh. unless it's like, uh, because most of the time, unless you're a veteran artist, you don't get one, right? You use the company's like twice mm-hmm. the gram or whatever. Yeah. They've all been opening individual Instagram accounts over the last week. I don't know what that means, but I don't think that's a good sign. Where, all right, where do hmm. you find these accounts? You can find some of them. I would Google them. But lastly, industry insiders say all members of AOA will be renewing their contracts with FNC. Hmm. That's pretty interesting because hmm. a couple months ago, yeah. the, the reports were that they were going to break up. And now they're all going to sign together. I thought, yeah. Hmm. But we'll have to see what happens with AOA because I think they kind of realize they're stronger as a whole than apart. But at the same time, their popularity has been waning a little as of late. So Mm -hmm. we'll have to see. All right. Upcoming releases, right? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. This one. Okay, so I'm looking at our script here, right? I thought I missed to do. There's nothing here. Let me let me go to the Wikipedia and make sure that there is actually nothing happening. Oh, I mean, we're not. We're not not recording this week, though. I know we're not recording, but I still think we should tell people what's on on the horizon. Okay. So this coming week, not that much, unless you're into Kim Dong Han, Jenner, who is also known as, oh God, what's her name? 
Jun Ji Yoon from Four Minute. That's her stage name. Oh. We also got Eric Nam on the eighth. Oh my girl yes. on the eighth. Henry Law's coming back finally on the ninth. Hmm. Oh, she was a singer. Encia is coming back on the tenth. We got Got Seven on the twentieth. Yes. NCT Ooh. on the twenty fourth. So that's just updating your what? May on the twenty fourth. Yes. All right. Let's get into produce talk, y'all. Oh, here okay. We go. All right. Yes. All right. Before before we start, right? So, um, produce X one hundred one confirmed that the contract length is five years. Whoa! Oh my God. So it's wow. two and a half years as the actual group, and then two uh-huh. and a half years will they can do their stuff at their companies, but also do the main group stuff. What? That's wow. really cool. I think. That's a really good deal. That's a really good deal. But that's in terms of the contracts. Let's get into who we like. So they they had episode zero mm-hmm. where they highlighted some of the kids in terms of dancing, singing, talents. individual talents, yeah. all that yeah. stuff. I have a PR. bias, like a hard bias this year already. Already? My bias is <laughs> E Yu Jin. He's a individual trainee and he's also known as Suhan from Sky Castle. That's oh my, my kid. Yeah. That's because you watched the show. That is my kid. Wasn't he the kid who was awkward in the the runway part? He's just awkward in general because he. I don't think he no. has any idol training, which is. He's cool. really young, isn't he? I think he's very young too. I will look it up. But Anita, do you have a hard bias at this point? Uh, we'll see. I I, don't, I can't say that I have like a one pick at the moment, but there's like a handful of people that have caught my eye, my attention. Um, so I'll just name a few. So one of them would be Park Beauty. So he's the model, one of the models from Esteem Entertainment. And um, so I think he just has a really good personality. I think he, he tries his best. Like, of course, he doesn't have specific training in dancing or singing, but from what I've seen so far, he's he tries his best and he's I think he's doing pretty well. So I hope he keeps it up during the show. Um another one that I can think of is um Chris Suhan, I think. Suhan. So he's an independent trainer. He made it to the A rank and I think he's the best dancer so far that I've seen. Oh, shit. Um, if you if you see him like with his hair, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit blonde right now. He reminds me a lot of Uji from Seventeen when they were doing um, their debut promotion. So he's a little short, but I think he has a lot of personality. He's a good dancer. I uh, I think he can make it. Uh, he seems really talented, so I hope he does good. Um, and uh, let's see another one. I, I'm gonna actually suggest. Two people because I really liked how they did on the the hidden box um, oh challenge my God, they you had. Watched everything. <laughs> I I've I've watched everything. Um, so these two people, uh, it's another model from a Steven. Uh, it his name is Kim Jingon. He's he's kind of older, but I think he has a very like he, he giggles a lot. <laughs> he's very smiley. Um, He's really oh, funny, game. and and uh, he was paired up with this guy from MBK Entertainment. His name is Nam Dohyun. He's so funny. <laughs> the both of them, it's it's a mess. That that. Do you know who Nam Dohyun is? Yes. That's Nam Taehyun's brother, yo. Wait. No, 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 no. No. Nam Dohyun, Hyun. He's he's really young. There's a oh. Nam Dohyun and a Nam Donghyun. Oh, yeah, that's confusing. Dohyun. But he's he's really young. Um and I feel like I heard him speak and he has this like f- his filler words so like in between sentences he sounds like he can speak English. It's like he he I don't know. He so- he sounds like he he's spoken English before. But um I would recommend watching that video if you haven't. It's really funny. They they're just really funny together um but yeah i think those are the people that i've been paying attention to the most um but i i don't know i haven't had like uh for sure 
pick like a group that I would say I'm okay. dedicated. Okay. I only watched episode zero, right? I don't know anyone else mm-hmm. other than who was shown in episode mm-hmm. zero. I'm going to talk about the kids who I thought stood out to me. Center yeah. boy, Son Dong Pyo. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's very young looking. Like, he looks like a child. Super young. He's tiny. He's pretty good, though, although I found his angel to devil talent a little cringy, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> okay. In terms of dance section, the one that stood out to me was Beck Jin. That kid can dance mm, really uh, well. Uh, yeah. I also, in terms of vocals, I thought Nam Dong Hyun, the brother, Nam, Tae-hyun, Nam yeah. Tae-hyun's little brother, was really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. If that kid can dance, he'll probably make it. That was one thing yeah, I thought. Yeah, he's a good singer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other kids that st- stood out to me was um, We Ja Wol, the Chinese kid. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid mm. tries really hard on his Korean yeah. pronunciation, so I have to shout it's... him out. The last one for me, other than Eugene from Sky Castle, is I don't have a name here, but the guy who did the dad gags was Yo, really funny. Tell me so. Tell that, me so. that dude, those, those. <laughs> So it was Ajay, Ajay Master. So Dad M- Magic mm-hmm. is basically what his segment was called. Was absolutely hilarious. Dude, now, I tried. I tried to do that on my own. Oh my <laughs> god, he, it was so funny. Is he old? He looked old. I don't, I don't know how old that kid is, but I thought that up. he was absolutely hilarious with his Dad Magic and. Wait, what color? What color is his hair? I hard to remember what he looks like. He looked brown. Okay, so he's that other one. There's like two Minso in the. I think one of them is blonde, but I think I know who you're talking about. Okay. All right, but other than that, I have. Man. How com- This year's going to be super competitive. Like, I can already tell. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's going to be brutal, I think, at the, at the top. How do, mm. We don't know how many kids are going to win, right? It's It used to be 11, but right. Aizuan was 12. I'm sure it'll be 12 again. Like, they've seen, like, the like the positive of having 12. Well, what if they say, like, 15 or something crazy? No. Okay, that's too much. No way, uh, no. Max 13. Max 13? Yeah. 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 Warren, did anyone else... Oh, I also like um Pick because of his name. Oh my god. <laughs> He's super popular. The, the the kid from Thailand, right? Yeah. All he was, of his he was pretty good. I liked him. So yeah. many views. I just thought that he is the most ironic name ever for a show, right? Like oh, his name is literally ironic. Pick. Perfect name. I don't know if that like he had had that stage name the whole time or that's just a shortened version of his um Thai name or anything like that, but mm-hmm. I thought that was a tremendous name to have. And he did that Muay Thai. I was like, pretty mm. legit. Mm. <sighs> but I don't really have that much on anyone else because, as I've said, I've only watched episode zero and they, they only showed maybe like 20 kids on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But I do expect the, who is it? The YG trainees. Oh. Uh-huh. I think that they have a humongous advantage on this show. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like, YG. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what's really interesting is that a lot of them, well, not a lot of them, but some of them, um, are not Korean. So there's, there's one person who's Chinese, and then there's one who's Japanese, and mm-hmm. they've been Chinese for a while. So so they should be very good. Yeah, so I hope they're. So actually, no. They, I think they're still officially YG, and so it's really interesting how they're just sending them. Yeah, X cause... X Y G that I know of is like Mida, and mm-hmm. uh, there might be another person. I'm, I'm blanking out, but I. You really know, know everyone it's... already. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched a couple of videos. A couple. Come a on. couple, Anita. Yeah. Couple, but you know. I think that those YG kids have a huge advantage. Nam Dong Hyun has a huge advantage because of his brother. Yeah. I also, mm-hmm. I don't know if this, so the kid from Sky Castle, Yujin, if he can, I know he's not that good at the beginning, right? I know that for, it's like, it's a pretty mm-hmm. obvious. He's not going to be that great. If he can learn to dance a tiny bit, right? Mm-hmm. Based off of Sky Castle popularity, he could probably make it, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I mean, yeah, man, maybe. Or it's going to be one of those things yeah, where he's going to be the meme guy where he lasts for a while and then doesn't make it at the end. That could be it, too. Dang. Yeah, there- I mean, I'm, I'm actually thinking of another person, too, that might have some sort of advantage from being having connections. Um, So there's a JYP trainee, Yoon Sobin. Um, and, I mean, I don't think... I don't think talent wise he's super amazing. Like he didn't make rank A, but I think he has a good personality and from what I can tell from like comments and views, I think he's gonna be like someone people watch just because of JYP. There's also a lot of kids from groups again, like Uptension. Yeah. There's a yeah. guy yeah. from there. Yes, yes, former leader of Uptension. Or yeah. That's a huge advantage. And then uh, one yes. of the, one of the kids I like, he's an MBK entertainment trainee, Ihan Gyal, who was on the unit. Right. Mm-hmm. He's really polished. Yeah. Or he, he he didn't make the final group, but he was one of the last candidates, I think, for yeah. the unit team. And he's very yeah. good. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the former trainees, or not former trainees, but like already debuted trainees just I yeah. think they majority of them made a so and he's in yeah. he's in a group already i am which is a boy group yeah so the, the, I, anyone who has an existing right. fandom just has a humongous advantage right. i would say but we'll have to see what happens i know since mm-hmm. this is the last episode we're not going to cover it on a week-to-week basis oh, but starting yeah. when we come back we will cover it so we should, we're going to have yes. probably a long produce episode where we like recap what we think so far what has happened yes. mm. mm-hmm. all that stuff and then we'll go on a week-to-week basis but i think that's good for the produce talk we just laid some groundwork vote for eugen my sky castle suhan <laughs> he has to reach the top of the pyramid that's a sky castle joke he must oh. reach the top of the pyramid here oh boy. although he should have been applying to soul medical school he's going on produce so we must (laughs) (laughs) so we must support him but i know you you have to trust in me as his (laughs) as his producer we must bring him into the group but this has been soju talk your weekly shout out k-pop i'm doug and i'd like to thank warren and nita for joining me for the entirety of season one (laughs) it's been absolutely bananas and honestly I will say I'm happy we are taking a little bit of a break. I do think I personally have a little bit of burnout and I'm looking forward to this one month. <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> like doing doing this every day, week, every, every week, week. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's super exhausting, but at a certain point, you start listening to music not because you want to, but because it's kind of necessary. And mm. I just want a little bit of time to like chillax a little. You know what I mean? Recharge. I'm, I'm starting a new job. They're graduating from college. We need some time off to refresh so we can come back strong in season two. Yes. Yep. But uh, in the meantime, you could always email us, Facebook message us, all that stuff. We will try to respond and get back to you if you want our opinions on anything. But we'd like we'll to think. To be- more active on Instagram because yeah. we're traveling and whatnot. We'll have a lot of photos. And we'll I want some them. pictures, Anita. Anita's going to Inky Dial. You got to take some pictures, <laughs> even though it's illegal. But even outside the building, we, we want some pictures. <laughs> but we'll see. I, I'm I'm thankful for the crew. I'm definitely Ooh. thankful for all of you at home for supporting us, Thank and you. we will see you in about a month and a half with season two. Bye. Bye.